This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. USA versus the United Kingdom. Once together, now apart, and always trying to beat each other. This time, they have found themselves battling on virtual soil. Mick Clatch and Rob Olenek are the names to watch as they are just 10 points apart going into the second half of this season. No finish worse than a fifth place, consistency is most definitely the name of the game for both of them. However, when two quarrel, a third rechoices, and that might just be the German Roman Pawlowski, who is only seven points behind the two. With this great championship battle ahead of us, a very warm bona tada this the Barcelona here from the Global Simulation Channel via the iRacing eSports Network. The crew to give you all these stats and storylines today will be Ryan Walker joining myself, Stefan Schlacher. Turn the knobs and pushing the buttons behind the scenes is our director, Sean Craig Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by the great Dougie Beard. Barcelona, an unfamiliar turf for the Lotus 49, as in 1967 the Spanish Grand Prix was held in Madrid at the Circuito del Yamada. So why not get accustomed to iRacing's most recent track edition with our GSRC lap guide? Welcome to Circuit de Barcelona, the home of the Spanish Grand Prix for nearly 30 years, it's easy to forget that this is a relatively recently built track in Europe. It's known for its long, sweeping corners and hosts the highest level of open wheel and motorcycle racing. Placing an emphasis on a good aerodynamic setup with high downforce cars, it's often overlooked that it offers plenty of overtaking for lower tier racing as well. In fact, most don't take into account that this adaptable track has five different layouts to choose from. These range from the nearly three mile long Grand Prix version to the minuscule one mile club circuit. Because of the pit straight being the longest acceleration zone, Elf is the most likely spot for drivers to get a pass done. After that, your next hope might be into Lakaja, which depending on which layout you use, could be a sharpened set of two turns or one long hairpin with an opening radius. In the early 2000s, a chicane was added close to the end of the lap, but the old Europe car corner can still be run. The Spanish fans have some gorgeous views from the many hills dotted along the track. And with the international fame this place has built over time, it's no wonder they're almost always full come race day. Joe Big doing what nobody can do better and talking about the history of this track. Ryan, what else can you add? on the difficulties that this make this track so special absolutely fantastic track uh, as we know it's famous for hosting uh, a variety of uh, real life series that, uh, such as moto gp formula one uh, the european le mans series blunt pain the list goes on but some uh, details about today uh, the track is 2.4 miles line, uh, miles in length or 4.73 kilometers has 13 turns, 8 of them being right-handers and 5 of them being left-handers and is uh, located in Montmelo, Catalonia in Spain. Now as always we have the F1 Drivers' Championship featuring on uh, this and well, as I already mentioned in the start-up of uh, this broadcast, Mikhail Edge from the United Kingdom, first place, 10 points ahead of his main rival of Rob Olenek, then just 7 points behind Roman Pawlowski, German driver, 17 points in total behind them. Sadly, we have a little bit of a drop-off ready to fourth place, Daniel said, who really was never able to go the pace the top three can have at times. He is 45 points behind an overtrain grade, 
the Norwegian driver 52 points already behind in fifth place. So not the tightest in channel of the top five, but the top three extremely tight together. Ryan, I don't think that F2 will look much different than the top three here in the F1 championship. Yeah, the, the F2 championship is still really, really close at the moment, especially between the top two. Oh, Tyler still leads the championship, but he's only he's only two points ahead of second place man Antonio Rees. And then further back, it's a bit of a, a bit of a drop off for the rest of the pack. Third place is Andrew N on 74 points, but four points behind him is Matt Yeomans. And then in fifth place, we've got Colin Coker. So it's a bit of a two horse race at the top, and then it's a it's the best of the rest fight for a, for the rest a, or for the top three positions in the standings. And as always, uh, as we do here for the Grand Prix Legends, like they did feature in real life, we have a Nations Cup, which currently is still being led by the United States, but that's only just one point between them and Germany, so that might be very interesting. Then it's a double one behind for the United Kingdom, 11 points there in third place, and then you can see a massive drop off to the next two positions. That's France in fourth place, 114 points behind and Norway 116 points behind, so even uh, that fourth place is still very tightly contested just between those two. Now Ryan, those were the championship numbers, but how are we looking for the race detail numbers? So some little details about anyone that might be watching the, the series for the first time this season, or has never watched the series before. This is round, round 7 of the 12 round season. Uh, the race length for today will be 20 laps, and then for the setup, it will be open, so any changes that you want to make to the setup, be it tire pressers, camber, suspension, uh, right height, anything like that, you are free to do that. And the incident limit for today is 17x, which will re result in a penalty. And if you get to 25x, it will result in a, an automatic disqualification. One thing we have to mention already is that Daniel Sancho will not be here in Barcelona racing with us because he's attending the real life Daytona 24 hours, which takes place obviously on uh, this weekend. Right now we have uh, Roman Pavslowski on the pole position for this round seven. And don't forget, as always, you're watching this live on the iRacing eSports network. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you haven't done so yet, you'll know if you haven't, as the button will still be bright red just below this broadcast. Michel Dudignon still making his way around uh, the Barcelonian track right now, going through La Caixa, the very long left-hander that it is now in this historic version that the Lotus 49s are racing here today. It'll be interesting to see how these uh, how these cars get on around here today as well, with it being their first uh, their first visit to the track. I've done some races around here, and uh, all the cool is, uh, yeah, just watching Jan Hoffman on a lap X in the final corner, and they hit the wall. Michel Dudignon putting in a third place for his qualifying efforts. First lap didn't count, so he will stand on that 40.551, one about three tenths behind a Roman Pavslowski, who's sitting in first place ahead of Mick. Claridge. And as always at this point of the broadcast, a little message from the Grand Prix Legends community. They would like to kindly ask you, the Lotus 49 fans, for a donation into their broadcast fund. If you'd like to find out more about these donations or their broadcast fund, please have a look into the description of this broadcast. As always, every dollar counts. And one thing we can mention already, Ryan, is that the Lotus 49 community has already a few donors to thank as they have received some donations from their fans. Yeah, it's good to see. <laughs> good to see some donations being made. Uh, I've, I have to say this uh, this series is probably one of the best series I've commentated on so far this season. And uh, the rest is always good and the community the community's always been friendly. So if anyone's wanting to wants to make a donation, then go for it. You won't you won't regret it. Right now, looking at Antonio Rees, who is making his way through New Holland. Can he improve on his qualifying lap? No, he can't, as that one didn't count. So the 41.936 is still standing for him right now in 11th place. Andrang making his way now also through the last two corners. 
New Holland, he still has to traverse, does that so very nicely sitting right now in 13th place. Can he improve from that at number 19? No, he cannot as that lab was about 4 tenths slower than his first one. As looking at the top of the the time sheets at the moment, it's the usual the usual people up at the front. You've Roman Pabsowski on pole position at the moment, uh, closely followed by Mick Claridge. It's good to see Mick back after having to miss, uh, miss last, last week. But the Denzel man uh, in third place, as always, uh, always one you can keep an eye out, is uh, Michel Dunignon. All right, now we're still seeing a few drivers circulating on track, but they're all not able to put in a qualifying lap as qualifying has just ended. And with that, we can say that Roman Pavslowski officially has taken the pole position here in Barcelona. To his left side, it will be Mick Kledge starting in second place. Michel Torino and Peter Mikus will be lining up in third and fourth. Peter Mikus, that's a new face inside the top five, at least in this season so very good qualifying performance from Amicus the number four driver over trend rate fifth place goes to him with Rob Olenek the second place driver in the championship lining up in sixth place Bill Tyler seventh place for him Dave Price lines up in eighth place ninth and tenth goes to Billy Bob Wright and Bruce Nelson Lining up, <coughs> excuse me, lining up in 11th place is Antonio Reese alongside Tim is David Rossi in 12th place 13th place is Andrew Eng, Chris Marikami in 14th, Michael R. Cook in 15th, Robert Plumley in 16th, alongside him in 17th is Matt, Matthew Siddle, uh, 18th is Jan Hoffman, 19th Andreas Bruno, and riding at the, the, 20, or the top 20 is Colin Coker. Osmar Schultz will be starting in 21st, uh, Marco Ravioli 22nd, Donald Peake! Yes, uh, that is. Uh, Donald Peak of the Joe Peak, been very much she's or she's own Donald Peak in 23rd. He is the last card to put in a qualifying time. Colin Bentley 24th, Brendan Cleveland 25th, and Trent Bus in 26th. As we're already green flag here for Barcelona round seven. A very quick start as they're all going off, and it's already a crash in the background. Big flips in the background, but all that behind uh, Roman Paslowski, who's leading into turn one, makes a little bit of a slide, goes wide, that opens up the door for Mikhailic, but immediately gets shut out again. And Michel Tenino still fighting for that second place against Mikhailic through Renault. They go side by side. Michel Tenino can't find a traction on the outside, though, so Michel has to settle in for third place. Yeah, that mayhem at, uh, for the back of the pack at the stay. I think it was maybe people just getting caught out with wheel spin or maybe just people getting too close together as they... Oh, Michelle! Oh. Sorry, Ryan. Getting very close to the back end there of McClurge. Still making their way single file through Good now. Going up to Kamsa. A very weird right-hander. I just never can get that one right, but these people most definitely have done so in the first lap. Mikhailic looks a little bit to the left side of Roman Pavslavski into Lakaisha. Pavslavski a little bit wide. Michel Tudinio has the most narrow line. It gets a little bit side by side there with Mikhailic, but the next one is a right-hander, so Mikhailic still ahead of Michel Tudinio. Pavslavski looking a bit ragged at the moment. He just seems to seems to be missing some apexes of uh, corners as they come down to the final corner to just to complete the first lap but these guys are still close at the front and it look, looks like uh, we could be on for maybe a, a three car fight or a four car fight if uh, these guys manage to pull away from the rest of the pack here comes the draft for Michel Ternino and Mick Kledge both of them go to the right side However, nobody's able to attack anyone, and here comes Peter Mikus on the brakes outside of Michel Tudinio. Sees the opening, but can't really do anything with it as Michel Tudinio just finds much better grip through the right-hander of Elf. On board now with Peter Mikus looking up to Michel Tudinio. Oh, Michel Tudinho nearly making contact there with Mick Kledge. We were, by the way, on board with Rob Olenek, who now made the pass on Peter Mikus. And that is contact between Mick Kledge and Roman Paslowski. Still fighting for control of his car. Roman Paslowski is finds it finally 
still side by side now between Claridge and Michel Tenier. Claridge still has problems on his brakes, goes super sideways through Weird. And now also behind that takes off the battle between Rob Olenek and um, Peter Mikus. Mikus on the outside of Kamsa, still side by side, going down a straight up to Lakaisha. With Peter Mikus having the inside for that left-hander. Both of them breaking very late. Rob Olenek a little bit deep on the brakes and can't find traction out of, La uh, out of Lakaisha. So he stakes it in fifth position. And a little bit of a contact there between Tudinho and Mikus now. This is very hot already. Yeah, we're on, we're on one lap. Oh, woo. Yeah, we're on only coming up to lap three of the race, and everyone's going at it so, uh, already, uh, like real aggressively. This is this is amazing stuff. All of this is happening behind the transmission of Roman Peslowski and Mick Kreitsch, who have opened up a little bit of a gap to Michel Dernier last lap, about a second faster for those two than Michel Dernier, who seems to have a little bit of a problem now and turn in after that hit from Peter Mika, so maybe uh, his tail was knocked out a little bit, or he's just struggling on the cold tires. Quite possibly, uh, maybe that contact from behind from, uh, from Mika might have affected uh, some rear end drop, he might have got some rear end damage possibly, and he's struggling with traction, but yeah, I think it's it's just a racing incident. It was just uh, both guys being close together, and uh, but thankfully they're still managing to keep going. But Mikas is putting putting the pressure back on. Do the owners do the sideways? Once again, way too deep into the brakes. Forward has to give up the position, maybe to Peter Mikas. He's on the inside. It's never a good position to be in. Through La Camsa. And I think that Michel Tudini actually had a slowdown through Weird because he was so far to the inside there. And has also to give up the position to Rob Olenek who now finds himself in 4th place. Already trying for the 3rd place for Peter Mikus. Next one is a right-hander though, so Peter Mikus has the preferred line through that one. But if he can hold it, the preferred line through, especially New Holland, is the outside. But he has to give up the challenge for 3rd place this time around as Peter Minikus once again prevails for that battle. This is an epic battle and yeah, uh, both of these guys are slowly dropping uh, slowly dropping duty on. But Sorry, up ahead, Mick Clash goes for the lead on the outside now of Roman Paslowski. Can he make it through Elf? The first one is a right-hander, the second one is a left-hander. Mick Clash has the line and he takes away first place from Roman Paslowski as Paslowski makes a little bit of a mistake through the left-hander of Elf. Yeah, Roman Paslowski is getting a bit, getting a bit argy bargy, and uh, he just—I wouldn't say it was intentional, but he just kind of ran Mick out of road, uh, out of room uh, a little bit. So, but they're still, still uh, battling away, still managing to keep going. And this, uh, if these two guys manage to pull away from these, the rest behind them, this could be, could be an awesome battle to watch. Rob Olenek and Peter Mikus are still going at it just behind those two leaders of uh, this race right now. By the way, we're only on lap 4 of this 20 lap race and this is already uh, one of the biggest races this season has seen. Which has seen a lot of big races already just in the 6 that we uh, have been able to attend. Peter Mikus is still chasing the back of Rob Olenek. And I have to say, Ryan, Peter Mikus looks very, very strong through Bank Sobrel. I've been quite, I'm quite impressed by Peter at the moment. This is probably, if, I, if I'm correct, this is probably his best race of the season so far. And uh, he's done a good job in qualifying, get qualifying inside the top 10. And he's uh, he's doing a good job at the moment in, in, the, in P, P3 at the moment and battling away with uh, Rob Olenek. So, and also behind those guys is, is still a duty on, but I'm just... At the at further back in the pack as well, where Antonio Rees is in front of Bill Tyler, and that is a critical, that is a absolutely critical for the the F2 championship. Peter Mikus looks a little bit to the inside of Rob Olenek through Elf, but nothing happening from that. We're a little bit spread out right now, Ryan. So why not take a quick look back to the first lap incident, the start incident actually that we had in the midfield of. Our Lotus 49 uh, grid. 
camera will be, uh, if I heard that correctly, on Dave Price going into that replay. So let's have a look what happened. So yeah, just looking at Dave Price and just, just looking to see. I wonder if it was just everyone getting so punched up together off the line. Oh, oh it was contact. Yeah, that wasn't the very smartest move, if I might say that. Going three wide and very narrowly on that front stretch. Right off the gate. Uh, maybe a little bit ambitious uh, there from whoever that was in the middle. The number 14. Is that actually Billy Bob Wright? That was actually Billy Bob Wright, the number 14. So a little bit ambitious from him as we go back. Michel Tourignon and Peter Mikas are side by side going through Europe car now. And Michel Tourignon on the inside takes away that fourth place from Peter Mikus, who had a very bad bunk stop, which is, by the way, a very uh, long feeling right hander just after Lakaisha. As do the ones. Oh, sorry, Steph. No, just go ahead. I was just going to say as well, I'm looking at the battle for uh, for P6 between Bill Tyler, Antonio Rees, and also in the mix now is Bruce Nelson. So. Three car, three car battle for P6 at the moment, and as they, yeah, these guys are also yeah, I believe these yeah, two of these guys are in the F2 championship. I'm not sure about Bruce Nelson if he's in the, the F1 championship or not, but this is a, an epic battle so far, and it's been going on for quite some time. Yeah, a little bit all overshadowed by the battles ahead of them. Let's have a look at them. As we are looking at Antonio Reese, who is in seventh place, they have already quite a separation up to the top six. Sorry, top five. It is about three seconds between Peter Mikus and Bill Tyler. As you can see, it's a four car train. David Rossi building uh, the or bringing up the rear of that train in ninth place. A little bit of cloud cover now over the Catalonian track, so maybe that helps. Antonio Rees setting up a pass over Bill Tyler for that sixth position. Back up at the front as well. Mick Claridge and Roman Pawlowski are still going at it, but uh, yeah, these guys behind them are slowly, slowly, slowly catching the gap back up to them. And if uh, if Mick and Roman they uh, don't watch the mirrors, that could be on for uh, could be more cars joining the pack up up at the front very soon. At the top of your screen, going through Europe car, you were able to see that Rob Olenik and Michel Tourigno were side by side going out of Punk Sabrell. Michel Tourigno already looking to the right side of Rob Olenik to take away that third place from him. Breaking very late into Elf, still holding the inside. Going side by side through the right, through the left. And now oh, that is nearly a touch between the two. Michel Tourigno has to give up that hope right now as he finds a little bit better grip uh, in the mid-turn, but is not able to do anything with that. And Michel Denigno already with, I think that was not a third contact, Rob Olenik going sideways now. That opens the door once again to Michel Denigno to the right side. He goes through Repsol. Next one is a left-hander. That is the turn of Seat. Michel Denigno, maybe he's able to find a good run out of Seat going into Wood, which is another left-hander on this track. On the outside, that is a contact through the grass, and he collects Peter Mikus, who drives under him and continues on his way. Also, Michel Tonino continues, but he's grabbing very heavily. As the, the replay is just about to come up right now, that was absolutely the, uh, the, the man I feel awful the most for is Peter Mikus. Yeah, it looks like Dudion just cut the grass and lo lost it in the curb as well, and Mikas was just the innocent victim in that incident. Seems like Peter Mikas didn't take up much damage, if any at all, so very lucky for him there. Same for Rob Olenik, who had been touched on his right rear wheel, but apparently that didn't uh, provoke any damage on his side. But obviously that has opened up quite the gap to the top two. Uh, Rob Olenik now about 3.1 seconds behind uh, Roman Postowski. As I have to say, puts in the fast sorry. lap of a 40.8. I was just about to say, it's, uh, uh, it's not like uh, Michel Dudion to be making these sort of mistakes this season. The type, any time I've watched him, he's always been in an incident. Uh, but we, we know from previous races, he's been having problems with uh, well, his, brake ped brake, uh, his pedals, uh, basically. So I don't know if that was anything to do with that.
Right now looking at Andrew Eng, who is in 10th place, fighting very fiercely there with Chris Murakami. And you're right, as you said, Michel Dinho, a little bit unlike him, he had a lot of problems on the bricks, maybe trying out some different setups uh, for his turn in and most definitely doesn't really work for him as Chris Murakami makes another mistake or makes also a mistake on the brakes which uh, leaves Andrew Eng saying thank you very much and takes away the ninth place from Chris Murakami. Uh, yeah, that incident between uh, Didion and uh, Mikas, uh, yeah, Didion retiring from the race means that everyone behind uh, gains a position and yeah, it looks like uh, Baltao is up into P4, uh, yeah, P5, Antuna Ruiz up into P6, Bruce Nelson so, up, into, up into P7. Andrew Eng going on the grass there, which gives back the position to Chris Murakami. So, once again, Chris Murakami in 9th place, Andrew Eng 10th, and Michael Quick in 11th place. Sorry, Ryan, for chopping in there. Nope, that's all good. I was just, uh, just saying that everyone behind the uh, Dudu on managed to gain a position, so everyone moves up. But back up, back up at the front, it's still McLaren's leading from Roman Pawlowski. And behind, the, behind them is Rob Olenek, about 3.9 seconds behind. Last lap saw the fastest lap of this race, posted by Roman Pawlowski, still stalking that rear of Mickey Clutch. Only about 4 tenths between your two leaders after 8 laps of this 20 lap race. And as you also said, Ryan Rob Olenek, 3rd place. Peter Mikos fifth or fourth place, sorry, and Bill Tyler brings up the back end of the top five. Um, he is about nine seconds already behind your leader of Mick Clark. I'm just, uh, just looking to see if there's any other battles going on through the field. Uh, at the moment, um, there's uh, Andreas Bruno and Robert Plumley are battling for what's lo what looks like P12. Yo, oh, Chris Murakami just got touched by Andrew Eng for ninth place into Wirt. So the second incident we have seen into Wirt, just Andrew Eng outbreaking himself and finding the rear of Chris Murakami. Going on to replay to show you guys exactly what happened there. Just, yeah, unfortunate racing incident from Andrew Eng there with Chris Murakami. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like uh, Andrew Eng just out, possibly just outbreak himself or just got caught out under breaking and just uh, tapped the rear of Chris Murakami and uh, uh, I don't, it was nothing intense, no, it was just a racing incident with them being so close together but uh, luckily both of them are managed to keep going and they're still in the race. Now, I don't remember seeing anything happening with Overtrain Great. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know why uh, Overtrain Great has made a pit stop of 32.2 seconds. He's right now in 23rd position and he did put in that uh, pit stop on a lap number two. So maybe something happened to him there. I'm not... I don't... I don't remember, or I don't recall seeing uh, Ovi involved in any incidents or anything like that, so it might have, uh, yeah, I know uh, from I've, the... Sorry, Ryan, I've just found out what happened to Ovi Trangraid and why he had to give up that very good fifth place starting position from him. Well, the problem was with him, he had a jump start about half a second before anyone else, so that explains why he had to stop right on lap one. As we are looking here still at that battle, which is for fifth place, happening behind Bill Tyler and Tony Reese were on board with Bruce Nelson, who is a third in that train, and right behind Bruce Nelson, David Rossi, who is starting to drop off a little bit off that train, so it's starting to look like just a three-car train, with Bruce Nelson being very much in the tone now of Tony Reese. Maybe something happening in two elf. Let's have a look. 200 meter board, that's where they have to roughly break. Because of these are very, very old and quite bad brakes that these guys have on their Lotus. As back up at the front, it's still Clarence leading from Pavzlowski. 
And uh, yeah, these guys are still close together, about uh, a five or six tenths of a second gap. And uh, it just seems to be it. Mick is managing to maintain that gap and maintain the pace, and he's uh, managing to keep a bit of a gap between him and Roman. So, but this race has still got a long way to go, uh, just under ten laps to go. So, yeah, still got a battle for the for the lead going on. A battle for the lead, a battle for the fifth place, and also a battle for twelfth place. So we still have some battles left, even though this race has cooled down a little bit from the initial uh, stuff that we have seen. Roman Pavlovsky about a six tenth behind, I uh, actually sorry, about a second behind your uh, leader of Mick Clash with a little bit of a mistake he had in this lap. So Roman Pavlovsky most definitely looking to get back into the very big slipstream these Lotus 49 have. Going back to the battle for uh, P16, we are on board with uh, Marco Ravioli. Sorry, actually this is for 17. Uh, that is between Ravioli on, and Donald Peak. Donald Peak trying to defend his very good 17th position starting from 23rd. He has gained about 6 positions, but that's not how you take Lakaisha there, Donald. Obviously has a slowdown because of that, but it seems like not really impeding him right now. Marco Ravioli though now gets away with that 17th place from Donald Peak. Yeah, I'm not sure where uh, not sure where Donald was Donald was going there, <laughs> but uh, I maybe wanted to try some uh, try some uh, rally cross. But anyway, uh, it looks like he's trying to slow, serve the slowdown on the straight, and he's letting. Who is that? I believe that's Brennan. Brennan Cleave one behind him. Tried to go up the inside for P17. Going side by side into Elf. Though Donald Peak much better on the brakes. And thus he's able to defend that 18th place. Now trying to get back to Marco Ravioli to get that 17th place again. But another very good Renault for him, so he did drop off quite a bit there from Raviol. And another mistake through Repsol that should seal the deal for Brennan Cleveland, or does it? As he is still able to defend that position going into Seat with once again just being better on the brakes. Indeed, uh, yeah, just uh, looking for, uh, throughout the pack to see if there's anything else going on at the moment. I think the only battles that are going on is this, this battle for. For a P18 and the battle for the lead on the battle for P yeah P5. Going all the way up to first place, we are once again looking at that battle between Nick Clash and Roman Pavlovsky. Rob Olenek still in third place, but if I have the points correctly in my head right now, that would mean that Rob Olenek would actually drop in behind. Rum Pavslowski and losing that second place from uh, the German. In behind them, we also still have to battle between Rob Olenik and Peter Mikus. So, if Rob isn't careful enough, he might lose even more vital points to uh, Roman and Mick ahead of him, as Peter Mikus is looking very racy, seeing that podium ahead of him and thinking this. Is my chance now or never he might be able to take his first podium of not only this season but I think in a very long time as both drivers make big mistakes into like I should Peter Mikus with a little bit of a less mistake holds the inside line but can't really find a grip uh, down there inside the group. fantastic battle between these guys at the moment and yeah, both of them, uh, both of them getting a bit of a slide on at the same time. The uh, synchronized slide, and I was like, as I would like to call it, but good battle between these two guys. Uh, race eats hard, eats all hard, but fair, and given given respect at the same time as uh, Peter might, Peter Mikas might have a run and Rob uh, headed down into turn one, and he might be able to try and make a move, and it looks like he's going for it, or or he backs out of it. Much better on the brakes for Rob Olenek than Peter Mikus going into Elf. So once again, Peter Mikus is not able to take away that third place, but he's most definitely showing a better pace right now uh, than 
Rob Olenek is in this latter part of the mid stage. Once again, we are on a lap 14 of this 20 lap race, so only seven laps remaining until we're able to crown the victor of uh, this race. As we jump up ahead to the battle for first place, once again, uh, looking over the left shoulder of Roman Pavlowski in his Lotus 49. But once again, another very good Kamsa for Roman Pavlowski that leaves him a little bit stranded in the toe of Mickey Kalec as they go through Lakaisha and now through Bank Sabadell. One of the last three right-handers of uh, this track. And Ryan Lakaisha, probably your last uh, passing opportunity on the last lap. It's, uh, yeah, one of those corners that you can make a move in if you get a good get a good run. Uh, but I'm watching Mick and, Mick and Roman at the moment. It looks like Mick is uh, strong, strong in the first sector through the twisty section and uh, the back straight. But the final few corners, it seems to be Roman can uh, close that gap back up uh, under breaking as well. So th it seems to be th these two guys have got uh, weaknesses. Uh, Oh, there's a, a battle for P6 is going on at the moment between what looks, what, what looks like uh, Bruce Nelson and Antonio Rees. And Bruce Nelson was actually able to take away that sixth place from Antonio Rees, happening right behind the gear bunks of Bill Tyler, who is still sitting in fifth place, starting from seventh. These guys behind him, though, they have been able to take quite a journey. Antonio Rees starting from 11th and Bruce Nelson starting from 10th place. They have both gained about four positions to their current position in the race. That's a good run for these guys at the moment, especially Bill Tyler. If Tyler wants to keep the, keep the lead in the championship, the F2 championship, I should say, then he has to finish in front of Antonio Rees. Inside the top 10, that is right now your closest battle. Also in this lab, also going into Elf, we had a position change for 10th place. Robert Plumley lost that 10th place to Andres Bruno. Pretty much happened the same exact way as Bruce Nelson did overtake Antonio Ries through there. As Antonio Ries looks a little bit stronger through Bank Sabadell, but look at how much he has to drop off through Europe Car. Really not a very good turn for him once again through New Holland. The next fast right-hander, he loses quite a bit to Bruce Nelson up ahead. Yeah, it's a difficult corner to get right. Uh, from the races I've done in the spec race before, the final corner is uh, the final couple of corners are so difficult to get right. And if you if you get a good exit onto the into the final corner onto the home straight, you can carry the uh, a tremendous amount of speed, but difficult corner but back up at the front McLaren has managed to increase that gap again to about 7 tenths of a second Roman Pavlowski looking a little bit less steady and consistent on his laps than uh, McLaren is doing but it's only so small of a difference in the lap times of Roman Pavlowski uh, just shows how much details or to how much of great details these guys have to go not only on their setups but also in their consistency to be able to stay at top of the field in the Lotus 49 community. As they're looking to complete lap number 16, we only have about four more laps to go until we find out who can win today's race in the Lotus 49 community as there's also a little bit of traffic coming up for Mick Kledge in the name of Osmar Schultz, your 22nd driver of uh, this race. And in 20th position, Ryan, we had a little bit of a position change between Ovid and Colin Coker. 
Yep, it looks like uh, Trengred managed to gain the position from Coker. Coker, it looks like he's going to run wide into the gravel, and that he does, runs wide into, into the gravel, and that allowed, allows Trengred up, uh, up the inside to re or to gain another position. As a, yeah, there's a, bat, a battle going on for P70 at the moment between what looks like uh, yeah, Mark Ravioli and Brennan Cleveland as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Ravioli has managed to, to hold on to that position for now, but they're coming on to the final corner. And it looks like uh, Brennan might have a good run on the exit heading onto the home straight and they might be able to get a run as uh, it looks like Ravioli might have just got a little bit sideways. Here comes Brandon Cleveland, goes to the right side and nearly already passed going up to the 300 meter board. Brandon Cleveland closes the door a little bit to Marco Ravioli but doesn't so 100% though he is better on the break so he takes away that 17th position from Marco Ravioli. Going back to the front, this is only going back or looking back to the start of uh, this Front stretch, Rom Paslowski and Mick Hledge are starting their lap number 18. So only three more laps for Rom Paslowski to do something about that Mick Hledge win here at Barcelona going through Le uh, Renault. Now that third turn, very interesting, very difficult right hand. You never really know where and when you can go on the throttle and if you actually have the line to be able to not run off track pretty much the same thing here through Repsol another right hander just those left tires are really in for beating here around Barcelona oh who is that on the outside that's Brennan Cleveland looking a little bit stranded there against the barriers let's see on the replay what happened there Brennan Cleveland remember he was fighting against Marco Ravioli going into Seat that is a little bit hot there for Marco Ravioli. Tries to yeah, avoid Brandon Cleveland and yeah, extremely unlucky for Brandon there. Gets stranded against the barrier and that is his race done and busted. It's back up at the front. It's still Clarence leading from Pavlowski and just watching now, the gap was 8 tenths of a second the previous lap but it's managed to come down to about uh, six tenths of a second, but uh, we'll, we'll see what the gap is as across the line. But they're in the same picture, and the gap's not that uh, not that much. Put that way. Two more laps to go. Roman Pavlowski and Mick Hledge. That lap time. That's only five or one thousandths of a second between those two in favor of uh, Mick Hledge, the driver up ahead. And yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's a little bit hard to say, really, Ryan. Um, if Roman Pavlowski is just not able to do anything against the pace of Miklach, or if it is just waiting that little bit to make a last lap attack on Mick. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, this is about as quick as uh, Roman can go, or maybe. Oh, like say, Bruce Nelson! Oh. Completely missing Repsol there is able to miss though also Bill Tyler and actually is a day on the track there great save by Bruce Nelson as we gonna look at that again on our cheese RC replay. Hey, I'm not sure what happened to uh, to oh. Bruce there. Oh, is it? Ooh, he went for a move up the inside and got sideways in the engine. Oh, he managed to save it. Ten out of ten for 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 style. 10 out of 10 for style, but 0 out of 10 for speed through Repsol. Bruce Nelson loses out quite a bit to Bill Tyler in the battle for 5th place. But once again, Mick Clash uh, leading the race for the last 19 laps. Maybe he also does it for lap number 20 as they now have started the last lap of uh, this race. Mick Clash still ahead of Roma Poslavski, about 6 tenths between those two. Who can win this? Who will be the first loser, as some say, or second place, depending on how you look at it. Rom Paslowski 
still looking at getting up to the back of McClatch. McClatch trying everything to defend that first place and to defend that gap he has over Roman Pawlowski going into Repsol for the very last time this race. I'm just watching the battle for P5 as well between uh, Tyler and Snelson. It's, uh, it's even after that mistake, Snelson's managed to catch Tyler back up. But these guys have to watch. In the background is Antonio Ruiz. If these two guys here they get into each other, Antonio Ruiz could uh, pick up the pieces and pick up more points to close the gap in the championship to Bill Tyler. Meanwhile, Mick Kledge now going into Kamsa, the right-hander. He's still ahead of uh, uh, Roman Pavlovsky. So we take a look back at Bill Tyler, who is in fifth place. Osmar Schulte, though, might play a little bit of a role in that battle for P5 as he is going to be a lap car for them. Hopefully not a lap car trouble as he's going to run side and let everyone pass. Great heads up driving by Osmar Schultz. Meanwhile, Mick Clash already going through Bangsabrel, the last uh, right-hander off the infield now through Europe Car. Goes a little bit wide there through the exit of Europe Car. New Holland, the last corner he has to traverse successfully. And that's that so. And so, Mick Clash, your winner of round seven here at the circuit of the Barcelona Catalonia. As a battle for the battle for uh, P5 between Tyler and Stelz is coming around the final corner. Stelz has got the, has got the run in the exit of the final corner. Oh, he's oh! made a Hard into the wall, Bruce Nelson goes. Is he able to move that car away from the position as he's a little bit in a troubling spot? Four cars have already passed him. He's now in eighth place. Where's ninth place? Michael Hook. Coming now through the last corner as Bruce Nelson is able to take away eighth. In 13th place, though, it's between Andrew Eng and Colin Bentley. Bentley with the inside through Europe car. Andrew Eng tries to do a little bit of a switcheroo, doesn't work out for him. Andrew Eng now goes to the right side of Colin Bentley through you, New Holland. Who can take it at the line? It is going to be that was Andrew Eng. Only 14 thousands of a second separating them over the finish line. Jan Hoffman takes home 15th place. And I think that was the last battle that we had to cover. So with that, we're going to quickly step aside uh, for a few moments to take a breather. But we will be quickly back for the post-race show where we will run you down the unofficial finishing order, talk to some of the drivers and close off an event. So don't step away too far as GSRC will be back after these messages.
welcome you all back to the Grand Prix Legends post-race show streaming into your home on the Global Sim Racing channel via the iRacing eSports Network. And as always, first on the agenda on the post-race show, it's the finishing order, which is being topped once again by Mick Claridge. A little bit of a grand talk uh, they there in the Lotus 49 Championship. He started in second place, finishes in first place, only had to overtake Oroma Pavslowski doing so successfully. He sadly only finishes in second place, about 8 tenths behind Nick Pledge. Rob Nick already 5.7 seconds behind in third place. Peter Mikus starts and finishes in fourth place with his number four. So yeah, that was most definitely the full show there for him. Bill Tyler started in seventh, finishes in fifth place already 21 seconds behind Mick Pledge. Antonio Reese. Great race from him, finishes in 6th place, David Rossi, same thing for him, finishes in 7th place after gaining quite a handful of positions. Bruce Snelson finishes in 8th pla place with Michael R. Cook in 9th and Andres Bruno rounds out your top 10 of this race, starting from 19th. Robert Plumley finishes in 11th place, behind him in 12th place was Chris Marikami. 15th place went to Andrew Eng, 14th was Colin Bentley. Jan Hoff then finished in 15th, Matthew, Matthew Sedal finished in 16th, 17th was Ove Trengrade, uh, yeah 17th sorry, 18th was Colin Coker, Donald Peake finished in 19th and rounded out the top 20 and 20th was Marco Ravioli. Not only running out of the top 20 but also the cars that have finished on the lead lap. Osmar Schultz, the last car that has finished this race, one lap down in 21st, Brennan Cleveland 22nd, three laps down Trent Bus. Also, three laps down in 23rd. Michel Dorigno, after a very, very awkward incident, he had to retire in 24th, 14 laps down. Billy Bob Wright and Dave Price didn't even make it to the first turn. They finished 19 laps down in 25th and 26th, respectively. Now, talking to us, it is your winner and championship leader of Mick Claridge. Mick, uh... First place, leading all the race. Uh, no sweat, right? Uh, sorry, Steph, can you hear me properly, first of all? Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, man, no sweat, yeah. That was one of the toughest races I've ever run. Um, even from a standpoint um, of issues with the track, you know, I've had uh, starter problems and frame rate issues all week with it. Um, uh, sorry, only when we got to the race session, um, so um, I was really worried um, about that, and it did sort of happen a couple of times in the first lap. That's I'm sort of going to say that's why my first lap was really scruffy, you know, at the start there. But um, but all the stuttering sort of hap seemed to happen around the issues, you know. So when I gave Roman a whack into the left hander there, you know, I was like, oh, that was all on me, you know. And um, so I tried to let him pass. I let him pass again and without letting Michelle through, you know. But, um, yeah, it's a really horrible first lap. I don't even know what happened to Michelle. I don't know if, if I took him out or whatever because I had a couple of big starters in that. Um, so if I did, apologies. And apologies to Roman because I was just talking to him post-race and then I got kicked out of the race. That, that is also a great thing. Um, but Mick, um, Catalonia, new track, first time racing in the Lotus 49 here. What's your assessment? It's really good. I love the track. Um, uh, I think we actually ran it uh, last season. I can't remember now, but I, I know we've raced there. I don't know if it was a hosted session, but um, I was really, really struggling for pace. And um, so I did like what I did at Spa this season. I just put in serious hours, you know, to try and get some some sort of setup and some sort of pace, you know. And um, it it, just, it it seems to be one of those tracks that's really dependent on whether you push too hard or not. So if you do push a little bit too hard, you overheat the tyres, you get a huge amount of understeer if you do push them too hard. Um, so, yeah, so it's really weather dependent as well. So like it was like when the clouds came over, my setup was working better and I was pulling a little bit of gap on Roman there. Um, you know, when the when the sun started hitting the track again, you know, I was slowing down a bit and stuff like that. So I really had to sort of hold back and not push um, through the middle of the corners, you know. Um, and then when we caught Osman... Um, uh, at the back market and now started getting stutters again you know because the cars in front of me one behind one in front so that messed me up a bit as well but but yeah no it's it's, it's it is really good this place um it really um brings some good uh fighting good battles and uh and yeah i, I really enjoy it well mick uh 
building up your lead over Rob and um, also over um, Roman. Going into the next race, which is going to be obviously in February at the in the Oval. Um, we have seen some wild stuff the last time we have been there. Uh, how are you looking forward to that one? Obviously, that's going to be a way different story than we had at any road course this season. Yeah, that's. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the guys that that are normal um, normally running over, like um, uh, Bill Tyler. You got um, and, and Rodney Evans and people like that. You know, they're going to be right up the front. You know, going for the win stuff like that. You know, so it's a lot of setup work to get the car fast around the Indy as well. You know, you got to you got sort of learn relearn how to set up the car. You know, none of us know how to set up for oval. <laughs> you know, really. So um, so it'd be really good to see who. who sort of gets the win there um it could be you know one of a handful of guys there but yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's just completely different it's balmy in it really it's bonkers indie great stuff well mick uh best of luck in in the now place and once again congratulations on winning here at barcelona yeah cheers steph um yeah and apologies again to if i did any take anyone out i don't even know if i did so apologies if i did cheers Mick Lodge, your winner of uh, this race here at Barcelona. Next up, it's Ryan Walker talking to third place finisher, Rob Bolenik. Yeah, Rob finished on the podium after a, a pretty decent race uh, uh, towards the end of but no man's land. But how was that for you, Rob? Was that a good race from, from your view? Seems like there we go. Oh, sorry. I thought you guys had muted me and it would just turn off. Um, um, I would. I qualified like crap, but the first uh, first few laps were pretty awesome. Until uh, I don't know if Peter and Michelle actually came together or not, but I saw them right behind me, um, kind of crash, and then um, couldn't catch. Michelle and Roman and with Peter so close behind he was definitely quicker than me in a few sectors of the track and put the pressure on and um, It's really hard to pass here, especially if if you run a kind of a little defensive line um, It was a fun race though. I really enjoyed the beginning Michelle's luck's got to turn around like I, I just can't believe <laughs> The season for him is ridiculous yeah, we were we were talking about uh, during the race as well. It's uh, it's not like Michelle to make those sort of mistakes. He always he's normally pretty consistent and up at the front all the time. But this season, it just seems to be not uh, luck's not going his way. And when it rains, it pours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it seems to be uh, apparently he's been having problems with his pedals or something like that. But uh, oh, I don't know. Hopefully, it's uh, fixed. But yeah, as you say, it, hopefully his luck turns around because uh, he's one of the one of the quickest guys in the series, but uh, how was that race with Peter? Was it? Uh, we noticed that Peter was really quick, and towards oh, the yeah, end, he, he started he started drop he started dropping off a little bit. Um, it, I think we're both almost the same. We had a race yesterday; it was almost exactly the same. We were right with each other the whole race, and um, when he's behind me, he's faster. When I'm behind him, I'm faster. It's just, it's one of those tracks. You, your cars, if you're almost the same pace, you're just going to stay together. You can't get away from someone unless there's mistakes. Um, I mean, he ran me down out of the draft. It's just that I think it's the chase mode and the hope you don't get caught mode that makes you drive a little different. Um, he's really fun to race with, though. I mean, he's a really clean racer and um, he doesn't take unnecessary risks. Um, turn one's really hard here. Like he could get a run on me out of the final turn. If you stay to the outside, most of the time you can break a little deeper and you can maintain the position. So it, it, even though you can get a run out of the final turn, it's really not even a great passing zone. There had to be uh, the guy in the front needs to really make a mistake where you pretty much can get by him before turn one. Going in side by side, and you can make it work on the inside. But you almost have to count on the guy um, on the outside that was ahead, just not doing too well through that corner, making a little mistake. Oh, so a final question before we let you go. Uh, are you looking forward to Indianapolis next week? 
Absolutely. It's a, yeah, I don't know, a couple, well, when we first started doing that, I, I was not an oval guy at all. And, um, I mean, I tried a little bit of it when I first joined iRacing and, um, now it's like one of my favorite weeks and I actually started driving oval cars and stuff because of it. Like, uh, it's almost like I'm or with a bunch of guys that I know, you know, there's some new guys coming in, sharing setups. And I learned a little around in my comfort zone kind of. And then now I kind of like it a lot, even though I, I thought it was the most boring thing I had ever, I, n- I never understood why people even like just going in circles, but there's so much more to it. And, uh, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, who knows who wins? I mean, there's a bit of a crapshoot <laughs> when it comes down to it, but it's just a fun, it's a really fun racing in a pack. You know, it's really tight and pretty tense. Uh, good stuff. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, joining us, Rob. And again, congratulations on the podium finish. And we look forward to seeing you on track uh, next week. Okay. See you guys later. Rob Olenek, your third place finisher. And sadly, that nobody else what wanted to talk to us uh, but we had the opportunity to listen to two very great interviews very insightful for both of them and yeah with that as always chaser c would like to thank once again the iRacing esports network for having us on their talent lineup to bring you the greatest shows on iRacing into your home make sure to like and subscribe to that channel if you haven't done so yet on top of that, we'd like to thank everyone on the track today for a great show and especially the Lotus 49 community for contracting with GSRC to broadcast it. Right now on your screen you can see all of the companies that provide us with their great hard and software GSRC uses to, uh, to, use us to deliver you the best possible show. Additional thanks goes to Chun Lao who provides us with her great masterpieces. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, please visit us at theglobalsimracingchannel.com. You can also find us on a social media platform, Twitter with at GSR channel, Facebook at facebook.com slash channel, on Instagram at GSRC underscore gram. All of the upcoming races for our other series are now slightly across your screen, so check them out and mark them down in your calendar to not miss another second of exciting racing action. Finally, on behalf of the entire crew, Ryan, Sean, and Dougie, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in as Mick Claridge took away the victory here in Spain. With that said, until next time, stay with us and sayonara, and as always, race hard, race clean, and we'll see you on the track.